so Jeff, for me, nothing has changed because I'm not learning nothing that I didn't already know. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe some people, mostly white people, are surprised by all this. You know, uh, by the George Floyd murder, or a, I mean, a, mod, a 21st century lynching on national television. And to be so callous as if this is what we do in the camera mm -hmm. and not think that you're going to wreak the wrath of God. <laughs> you know, it's something wrong with that picture. But that ain't nothing new, though. You know, um, I think I think 2020 has um, has finally made uh, the black voice truthful in a sense. <laughs> You know what okay. I mean? Because we were so un. Now it can't be that bad. I'm gonna give you an example. I was talking to a a, a brother of mine, um, white brother, and he came to me last Friday, and he said, "Rodney, you know when you first got here, you had been saying how bad it really is with institutional and systemic racism, and I just couldn't buy it was that bad. It it can't be that bad." He said that I'm here to repent because mm. you were right all along. Mm. You know what I mean? And he realized that this year. He realized this after the, the, the insurrection is at the Capitol. Well, last week. He recognized that <laughs> last week. Wow. What I've been saying for four years since being here. Yeah. You know, it is that bad, my brother. But the problem is individualism again, right? It, you don't think it's touching you, so, so then you don't believe it because it's not really touching you the way it touches another human being. So 2020 didn't bring anything new to nah, your surface. At all. Not at all. But it made it so stark for other people Correct. that it's just possible that truth can now finally Correct. get that understood. They, exactly. Well, I got to admit that 2020 for me um, did that for me mm -hmm. last spring. Okay. When I saw the eyes of people that I knew and cared about mm -hmm walking in the march downtown mm -hmm, in response mm -hmm, to mm -hmm, George, George Floyd. Floyd's killing, yeah. And um, I remember in, the, in that moment recognizing that this was a hurt mm -hmm. that I didn't feel, mm -hmm. but I needed to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I needed to share that hurt. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. even though that hurt had never touched my life before, mm -hmm. That's not because of other people. That's because of me. Mm -hmm. That's because I haven't let that hurt get right. in. Right. And so what you're saying about uh, justice being the kind of thing that is when we get out of our individualism, I, I can tell you I sense that. Listen, man. Until we get to the point as a people where when I hurt another human being, not only am I hurting that human being, not only am I hurting myself, I'm hurting God. When, when you do it to the least of these, my brethren and sister, and you're doing it to me. That's the words of Jesus, Matthew 25, 31 through 45 somewhere, right? Oh, when that you, whole chapter that freaks whole me out. Right, <laughs> right, right. It's, it's about the end times, right? Well, and it's about, it's about if you don't do these things <laughs> that I've told you things. to do. But see, here's, here's, the, here's the problem. We think it's all about a confession. Mm. Oh, I, 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 I confess Jesus as my Lord and say, I'm good. Not according to Jesus, if you look at his teachings. Read the red words, they'll freak you out. <laughs> you know, and then what, what else I learned in 2020 that, that, that was my, 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 the most hopeful moment for me. Okay. Was this. Post George Floyd's murder on national television. To see young people, and, and, and the, just to see the inner generations globally be protesting all across the world under the Black Lives Matter movement, right? When I saw the, 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 the energy of the young people, and this is where my hope comes from, comes from the energy of the young people um, and the memory of us older folks or the, or the, the memory, the, the wisdom, together, that's where my hope is. Mm. But my, my, my hope is more so in the young people. So you're saying that, in a sense, 2020 gave you more hope than you had before. 
after the, the protest, yes, but it quickly died, though, because when the last time you heard anybody mention George Floyd's name? It's been a long time. And I just think, that, let me tell you something else about what I learned about uh, 2020. If America can put so much emphasis on saving lives due to COVID, if we just put half of that effort into saving black lives. William Barber II said America is too comfortable with the, with, the, hmm. with the dying of other bodies, with the deaths of other bodies. You know, we don't care about those bodies, but you know those bodies are creating the image of God as well yeah. and been given the breath of God. We don't understand, Jeff. Not only am I connected to you as a male, not only am I connected to my, 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 my siblings uh, biologically, um, or not only are we connected through Jesus, but before all of that, we are connected to the human race because not only did God create both of us in God's image, God decided to breathe the breath of Yahweh in us. Hmm. That's God's choice, right? That's what connects us before anything else. I'm connected to the human race, whether, whether the person is Muslim, whether the person is Jewish, whether the person is Christian, whether the person is Buddha or Baha'i or whatever faith tradition it is, whether the person is black, white, whether the person is Latinx, whether the person is male or female, I'm connected to the, the human race because God decided to give us the breath, hmm. period. And until we understand that, we ain't ever going to do no real justice because mm. we don't think it's touching me. And, and, and injustice anywhere affects justice everywhere.